Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, coming back to the second lecture, now we will study about the spectrum of an AM signal. Spectrum means the presentation of any signal in its frequency domain. So, spectrum of AM wave or signal means the presentation of AM signal in its corresponding frequency domain. Let uh, X of T be the message signal whose Fourier transform is X of omega. You can see here this is a message signal X of T in the time domain. Applying Fourier transform to this signal we have its frequency domain version. That is we have the spectrum of the corresponding X of T. And the frequency spectrum is represented by X of omega. You can see here X of 0 is its peak value ranging from minus omega m to plus omega m. We know that the carrier signal is given by c of t equal to a cos omega c t. After applying the Fourier transform we have c omega that uh, this c omega is the corresponding frequency domain of c of t. And this c of omega is equal to a pi delta of omega plus omega c plus delta of omega minus omega c. Graphically you can see here this is the time domain representation of the carrier signal C of T when applying Fourier transform we have the frequency domain version over here. We have two peaks that is delta of omega minus omega C here and delta of omega plus omega C here. So this is A pi that is maximum value over here. Now the aim signal is given by S aim of T equal to X of T cos omega C T plus A C cos omega C T. This is part 1, this is part 2nd. Taking Fourier transform of equation 1.5, we have to find the Fourier transform of part 1 as well as part 2. The part 1 Fourier transform x of t is x of omega. On multiplying it by cos omega ct, we apply the Ehlers identity to this. x of t remains as such. Cos omega ct can be represented as 1 half of e raised power j omega ct plus e raised power minus j omega ct. Now applying Fourier transform individually to these parts we get one half of x of omega minus omega c because it is plus here so a minus will come in the Fourier transform plus one half of x of omega plus omega c because minus omega j c t will convert into plus by using the frequency shifting theorem. Now substituting the values we have s of omega that is the frequency domain version of s of t that is time domain modulated signal we have one half of x of omega minus omega c plus x of omega plus omega c plus e pi delta of omega plus omega c plus omega of delta of omega minus omega c. Now the power analysis of aim signal. <coughs> the general expression for aim signal is given by s of t equal to ac into 1 plus k a x of t cos 2 pi f c t where x of t is the message signal it is given by this thing am cos 2 by fmt. Substituting this value we have s of t equal to ac into 1 plus ka am cos 2 pi fmt into cos 2 pi fct where ka is amplitude sensitivity it is simply a number while as ka am is equal to mu is the modulation index. The above equation 1.9 can be written as s of t equal to ac cos 2 pi fct plus ac mu into cos 2 pi fm t multiplied by cos 2 pi fct. It can be further written as ac cos 2 pi fct the carrier component plus ac mu by 2 cos 2 pi fc plus fm into t the upper side band frequency component plus ac mu by 2 cos 2 pi fc minus fm into t the lower sideband component. Now this upper sideband and the lower sideband came within the brackets that is by applying the formula cos A into cos B and cos A multiplied by cos B is equal to cos A plus B by 2 plus cos of A minus B by 2. Now the total power associated with S of T is distributed over the carrier component or the upper sideband component and the lower sideband component. Mathematically we can write total power is equal to carrier power plus upper sideband power plus lower sideband power. Now talking uh, of the power in general sense, 
every uh, this ac power is equal to v r m square by r that is resistance but we know that v r m s is equal to v m by root 2 that is peak value or peak voltage by root 2 so your ac power becomes v m square by r uh, 2 times r divided by 2 times r substituting the corresponding values we have peak value ac in the carrier component we have peak value equal to ac mu by 2 in the upper side band and the lower side band so the corresponding powers become this hence the total power ac square by 2 plus ac square mu square by 8r plus ac square mu square by 8r and uh, these two are common terms we can have twice over here it becomes pt equal to ac square by 2r plus 2 times ac square mu square divided by 8r hence the overall power becomes this thing pt equal to ac square by 2r into 1 plus mu square by 2 or pt is equal to pc into 1 plus mu square by 2 you can say that the total power is equal to carrier power plus side band power both upper side band as well as lower side band so the side band power is equal to pc into mu square by 4 we have to know two things over here pc is independent of mu there is no part in the carrier power which is dependent on mu that is modulation index you can see from here where the cursor is on the left side of the screen second part as mu increases that is as modulation increase the total power increases which means p usb and p lsb increase special cases if mu is equal to 0 pt is equal to pc if mu is equal to 1 you can see here that the carrier power becomes 2 by 3 of pt or in other sense you can see the carrier power is equal to 66.6% of the total power transmission efficiency and generation of am wave transmission efficiency the amount of useful message power may be expressed by a term known as transmission efficiency of am wave or it may be defined as the ratio of useful power to the total power now it is denoted by neta so neta is equal to useful power divided by total power useful power is the sideband power because the sideband is contain the message because sideband is contain the mu part so neta becomes by substituting the values of uh, um, sideband power and total power the transmission efficiency becomes mu square divided by 2 plus mu square now we will see generation of am signals the method of am generation may be broadly classified as low level am generation and high level am generation first low level am modulation in such systems modulation is done at low power levels that is at small power levels associated uh, with the carrier signal as well as the message signal hence the output power of modulation is also low the block diagram is shown as below you have here message signal you have here the rf radio frequency carrier oscillator which generates the carrier signals both these signals are being fed to the low level am modulator that is the modulation takes place here before power amplifying next the modulated signal is given to the wideband power amplifier and hence it is transmitted using the transmission antenna after modulation power amplifiers are required to boost the signals which i have already discussed over here second is high level amplitude modulation in such systems modulation is done at high power levels that is the baseband signal as well as the carrier signal must be at high power levels before the modulation so the block diagram is as follows let me explain this is the message signal it is power amplified before modulation again we have rf carrier oscillator the signal is power amplified before the modulation both these power amplified signals are the being fed to the high level power am modulator next the modulation is modulated signal is transmitted using the antenna now we have square law modulation in this method the non linear property of some of the devices like diodes transistors and fets etc are used to obtain the am signal here we take square law diode modulation which employs a diode for the modulation process This method is employed at low voltage levels because of the fact that the current voltage characteristic of a diode is highly nonlinear in low voltage regions. The block diagram is given as below. You have one message signal here, you have a carrier signal. Both of these are being added being fed to the modulator 
which constitutes our signal V1. This signal V1 is then being fed to the square law device that is diode whose output is V2 of T. Then V2 of T is passed through the band pass filter. The band pass filter will give us the AM signal. Now let us see the mathematical analysis of this uh, square law diode modulation. Since the non-linear relationship between input and the output of a diode is expressed as output equal to A multiplied by input plus B input square plus C input cube so on as you have read already this in your EDC subject which was in the previous classes or previous year. Now this equation can be graphically expressed as this thing you have voltage over here you have current here and this is the characteristics of the diode. From this figure 5 that is this figure the input to the diode is V1 of T you can see here here we have the diode here we have the diode V1 of T is applied over here and the output of this square law device is V2. <coughs> so diode input is V1 but V1 is itself equal to M of T plus C of T that is V1 of T equal to M of T plus AC cos 2 pi FCT. Now substituting the values corresponding values that is output here is V2T so we can write V2T here we have A it is just a constant write it as such V1 of T plus B into V1 square T plus C into V1 square V1 cube T and so on replacing or substituting the value of V1 in each and every term we have V2 of T equal to A multiplied by M of T plus AC cos 2 pi FCT plus B into M of T plus AC cos 2 pi FCT whole square and so on neglecting the higher terms because those become very complex cubical terms will become very complex and those will not be allowed by the band pass filter you will see it later on now <coughs> since the band pass filter is centered around omega c so it will reject all the high frequency components here v2 of t equal to a into m of t plus ac cos 2 pi fct as such and b over here is as such expanding this whatever is within the brackets we have a plus b whole square that is a square plus b square plus 2 times a b so which means here we have m square t plus ac, co AC square cos square 2 pi fct plus 2 times m of t multiplied by ac cos 2 pi fct now we have v2 of t equal to a into m of t which will be our first term plus a into AC cos 2 pi FCT of a second term plus BM square T term 3 B into AC square cos square 2 pi FCT term 4 plus 2 times BM of T AC cos 2 pi FCT term 5 since we have already discussed that the band pass filter is centered around omega C so it will reject all the high frequency components since this is a DC term and term third is also a high frequency component term fourth is also a high frequency component because when you expand this cos square theta it becomes 1 plus cos 2 theta that is 2 times FCD 2 into 2 that means 4 times carrier frequency which is a high frequency component it is blocked so the term 1 3 and 4 will be blocked by the band pass filter now only two terms that is term second and term fifth will be allowed by the band pass filter as the frequency is centered around omega c <coughs> therefore s a m of t is equal to a into a c cos 2 pi f c t plus 2 times b into m of t a c cos 2 pi f c t so uh, taking out the value uh, this uh, cos 2 pi f c t common and a into a c common we will have s a m of t equal to a into a c into 1 plus 2 into b by a m of t cos 2 pi f c t s m of t is a c dash where a c dash is equal to the product of these two things 1 plus twice k a m of t where k a is equal to b by a cos 2 pi f c t which is the required equation of standard a m this is the end of lecture second thank you any queries you can call